Next up, uh, I'd like to invite Stephanie Hansen, Director of Marketing and Investment Relations from Snowline Gold to the stage. Hi, Stephanie. All right, well, thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to our presentation this afternoon. Um, my name is Stephanie Hansen, as Paul mentioned. Um, I'm the Director of Marketing and Investor Relations with Snowline Gold. Um, so Snowline may be a name that's unfamiliar to some of you in the audience, um, and that's likely because we've only been a company for two and a half years. But in those two and a half years, we've made two very significant gold discoveries, uh, one of which I'll highlight today. So zooming out, uh, Snowline Gold is a gold-focused discovery stage exploration company. We have eight assets in the Yukon Territory in the northwest region of Canada, and we have a very large land package there. We have over 330,000 hectares uh, that we're exploring with over prime, uh, 30 primary targets. It's our forward-looking statement. I encourage everyone to download the presentation after and have a look at this slide. Uh, just before we get into the discovery, uh, this is a look at our capital structure. Um, we have 144 million shares outstanding, fully diluted 161 million. We have a market cap of 620 million Canadian, and we have 36 million in our treasury. Additionally, we have $18 million in warrants that are in very strong hands, well in the money, and due to expire uh, next year. So our current treasury will uh, see us through the next two exploration programs. Uh, on the ownership side, uh, we have some very great long-term shareholders. Um, we have management and other insiders at 27%. Um, we have Keith Newmeyer, who is the CEO of First Majestic, um, and in the room today, uh, he owns 6%. And uh, we saw B2 Gold uh, come into the story earlier this year, and they're sitting at a 9.9% uh, share. In terms of uh, institutions and funds, uh, they own 16% of the company, and you can see a few of them on the, on the list here. Um, groups like FANEC, 1832 Asset Management, uh, Commodity Discovery Fund, Crescat Capital, and, and more recently we saw T. Rowe Price come into the story. So um, happy to see this list of names growing and have them you know, continue adding to their positions in the company. Um, in terms of research coverage, we have four groups covering us. We have Agentis Capital, uh, SEP Resource Finance, uh, Cormark, and Canaccordum. All fantastic names covering the story, and uh, I encourage everyone to go out and read their, their research. The team behind Snowline is a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, as you can see on the screens here, it's a young team, but it's a very dynamic team, and I think it's great to bring a lot of fresh um, energy into the industry. Um, but it's also backed by depth of experience on the board level. Um, so we have representation from the technical side, the community engagement side, and the capital markets side. Um, Dr. Craig Hart, he's our chair. Um, he's the expert on reduced intrusion related gold systems, which is what our Valley discovery is. So we're very happy to have him on the team. Um, Cal Morrison is another one to point out. He most recently joined us on the board. Um, he, if, if, if anyone's uh, familiar with the Great Bear uh, Resources story, uh, Callum was their CFO, um, so we're very happy to lean on his expertise. In terms of our company leadership, um, we have Scott Berdahl. He's our CEO, uh, director, and co-founder. Um, he, uh, he's been prospecting his whole life, uh, but more recently, he's been a geologist for the past 15 years, and uh, he brings a very strong technical background to the role. Um, he's extremely well educated, and he's been a very effective leader for the company in the past two and a half years. Uh, to paint the picture of where exactly our assets are, um, you can see a map of the Yukon here. So our assets are located in the central east region of the territory. Um, the assets occupy the intersection of two prolific mineral gold belts, um, one being the Rakla and the other being the Tombstone Gold Belt. Um, it's also important to note that uh, Snowline is first movers in this region. Uh, we're lucky to be exploring in the Yukon. Uh, it's a stable jurisdiction. It's a mining friendly jurisdiction. It's a mining friendly jurisdiction. Now, as investors, you're sitting in the room and probably asking yourselves why invest in a company like Snowline Gold. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to the Valley Discovery if you're not familiar. Um, 
The, the Valley Discovery is a reduced intrusion related gold system or a bulk tonnage style system. Um, you know, its closest analogs are Victoria Gold's Eagle Mine, which you'll hear about after, um, and then Fort Knox in Alaska. And uh, historically, geologists haven't been that excited about these type of systems because they're often low grade. Uh, but what we're finding with the Valley Discovery is that it's unusually high grades. Um, you can see some of our top intercepts on the left-hand side here. Um, you know, you're seeing you know, 2.5 grams per ton over hundreds of meters. So just to look at uh, the, the discovery a little bit further, on the right-hand side here, these systems are characterized by their sheeted quartz veins. And we won't get too much into the geology, but um, these sheeted quartz veins carry the gold. Um, and so, you know, in a typical system, you would see, you know, three to five veins per meter, and that can be considered low grade and can be mineable. But in the case of Valley, and you can see here on the right hand side, um, there's upwards of 30 veins per meter in this intercept. And I think it's also important to point out that, you know, this is just a small snippet of this intercept. This goes for hundreds of meters. And, you know, this is not just one uh, hole that we've drilled that's spectacular. There's multiple of these within the discovery. So you can see that actually on the left-hand side here. So this is our plan map of the discovery. The pink blob in the background, that's the intrusion that we've been drilling. Um, with the intercepts overlaid. Um, so you can see that's a very consistent, continuous system that we've been drilling into. And uh, so just for, for context, it might be a little bit small on these screens, but the, the warmer the color, the higher the grade. So the pinks, you're seeing over two grams per ton, and you know you get into the reds, and that's one to, one to two grams per ton. So very atypical of, of this type of system. This is just a quick look at the cross section. Um, you know, another top attribute of this discovery is that the highest grades are occurring right from surface. So when you're thinking down the line um, and you're considering capex, you know, that's going to be paid off extremely quickly because the highest grades are occurring right at surface. Um, additionally, when you look at strip ratio, that would be extremely low. So um, for, for investors with the Valley Discovery, we're not done here yet. Um, we, based on recent drill results, we um, discovered that this discovery is still open at depth and to the northeast. So our team in 2024 is going to come back to this discovery and continue building it out and gaining their confidence um, as to what we have there. Now, in terms of where these projects came from, um, you know, our CEO that I mentioned, he's been prospecting his whole life. Uh, that's a picture of him down in the bottom left corner. He's about 12 years old at that point. Um, so him and his father have been prospecting in the, in the Yukon since the 1980s. Um, and their competitive advantage was always to stay off the beaten path. Um, you know, a lot of the times you can find some moose pasture that way, but it also presents the opportunity to find some pretty exciting things, which is exactly what they've done. Who we are as a company, um, Snowline is a values-driven uh, company. Um, we've distilled our philosophies into four main points here. Um, environmental respect, building community, going big, and doing it right. We recognize that the area that we're exploring in, we need to find big things. We're not out there to find half a million ounces. We want to find something big. Um, and the Valley Discovery is showing us that we're well on our way to doing that. Um, but I, on the other side, you know, we are committed to building a company that's good for the territory. Um, our CEO, he's born and raised in the Yukon. Um, he's currently raising a family in the Yukon, running the company from the Yukon. And so creating a company that's good for the territory and its community members is extremely important to him and our whole team. Um, and I'd be happy to ch uh, chat more about some of the initiatives that we've been working on um, on the community front after the meeting or after the presentation. So our 2023 exploration program, um, it saw 25,000 meters of drilling. Um, the Valley Discovery had 15,000 meters of drilling put into it. The focus was expanding, de-risking, and defining our high-grade zones. But then, you know, coming 
Coming uh, back to the regional picture, Valley was not the only thing that we drilled. As I mentioned in the beginning, we have a 330,000 hectare land position uh, that we're currently exploring, and a couple of those targets that uh, we also focused on was the Gracie target. Uh, it's a suspected sibling intrusion to the Valley discovery. Um, so that saw 2,000 meters of drilling. Um, and then we also conducted phase one drill programs um, on other targets within the portfolio. So the goal from, from the 2023 program was to continue building out Valley, but then also uh, you know, in hopes of making additional discoveries around uh, the portfolio. In terms of what investors can expect moving forward, um, we still have a lot of uh, news flow to come over the coming months. We've got 8,300 meters of assay results to come. That's 21 holes over four targets, um, as well as uh, an extensive uh, surface program that we did this, this summer. Um, additionally, we conducted some advanced metallurgical testing on our valley discovery, so that will also come in the coming months. And we've been working on some regional uh, consolidation uh, within the portfolio too. So um, with that, that's what investors can look forward to. And I appreciate everyone joining this afternoon and thank you very much. Thank you, Stephanie. We've got a, a few minutes for questions, I'll kick off. Um, how do you see the potential to continue growing the scale of the discovery? What's the, the drill plan for next year? Yeah, so this, uh, as I mentioned, the, the drill program for 2023, it's going to be a baseline for 2024. Um, so that saw 25,000 meters. Uh, we expect to do a minimum of 20, 25,000 meters next summer. Um, we don't have our assay results uh, completely back, as I mentioned, but um, once, those the, once those come in, the technical team will go back, assess that, and plan for 2024. But roughly speaking, we'll spend you know, the majority of our time um, building out value, or valley further and, and uh, you know, probably 40% uh, exploring the other targets in the portfolio. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about the relationship with B2 Gold? Um, are they just an investor, a passive investor, or is there something more there? Yeah, so um, B2 Gold came into the story earlier uh, this year, um, and they're a pure shareholder. Um, they own 9.9%. Um, they, when they came into the deal, uh, they, uh, they exchanged, so they can, um, they have the right to part participation, right? Um, so they have the, the ability to uh, participate in the future financings uh, to maintain their position. However, um, they gave, in exchange for that, they gave up their, their voting rights, so they have to vote with management. Um, so purely at this point, they are a shareholder. Um, you know, our, it was our CEO and our board's vision to keep them as purely a shareholder um, in order to create a competitive landscape for um, you know, other groups who are interested in our projects. Okay, uh, we have a couple of minutes. Any questions from the audience, please? One just here. Uh, how's your financial situation? Any debt? No. Um, so we have 36 million in our treasury, um, and that will take us, and we have 18 million in warrants that are well in the money and in very strong hands. Um, so that will take us uh, to, to the end of 2025, so the next two exploration programs. That's pretty unique. Um, anybody else? Any other questions? One over here. How much is the total you built out right now? It's over five million dollars already. Uh, we're pre-resource. Um, so, I mean, the closest thing I can point you to is what our analysts have been saying. Uh, but we, we have an internal number, but haven't, haven't uh, uh, got there quite yet. Okay. Yeah. When do you think you'll be in a position to put a resource out? Uh, we could theoretically get there right now with the amount of drilling we've done, but you know we want to understand the full picture before we, um, you know, we, before we put something out. Um, but likely, you know, after another season's worth of drilling, we could we could get there more comfortably. Okay. Um, any other quick one over here? How close is Michael Gray with his estimate? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, obviously, <laughs> can't comment on that. Uh, we have our internal numbers, but um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get there when we, when we get there. Okay, well, Stephanie Hansen, thank you very much. Thank you.